Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. All right. We're in Luke chapter 4 this morning. Hallelujah. And um, Jesus got, got there and did as his custom. We talked about that this morning. He stood up for to read and took the book of Isaiah. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recover of sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then this morning we kind of we went, went way off from where I thought I was going and spent uh, the, the balance or, or the weight of our time talking about having right discernment about the anointing in ministers' lives and people's lives and not miss construing what is the anointing, not misinterpreting success as the anointing, not in misinterpreting uh, following as the anointing, and so forth. But, you know, uh, that was this morning. This is tonight. All right? <clears throat> Jesus said he was anointed. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so the anointed one, hallelujah. Remember, uh, uh, we've, a number of years ago, Brother Copeland uh, kind of went back over into Isaiah and found it says where the, the, the uh, the yoke shall be destroyed and the bird removed because of the anointing. And so it began to define the anointing, which would be accurate, as the yoke destroying, bird removing power of God. Amen. Remember, the name Christ is not Jesus' his last name. It was Jesus, the anointed one. Amen. The title he had was Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was his name. Christ is what he was, anointed. Amen. Lord is his title. Somebody say Glory. Hallelujah. And so <clears throat> Jesus said he was anointed, and with that anointing, he was going to do something with it. Amen? One, he was going to preach the good news to people, or the gospel. Yeah. Now, let me say this. The gospel includes things other than making you happy every 24 hours. What good news is how to be free and live free. See, we, we, we kind of take it and just go, it's just the good news, and we, get, we kind of get over on that, and that's all, all we want to preach is, is good news, good news. When you tell people it's wrong to see, you're not preaching good news. No, the good news is you can be free from sin, and here's how to live free from sin. Amen. There's an anointing to destroy this power over your life, and here's instruction how to live free in that freedom that you got. Amen. Amen. That's good news. Amen. I said, that's good news. It's not good news that, you know, I'm going to set you free, but I'm not going to tell you how to do anything with it. You go right back into the bondage you came out of. As a matter of fact, the good news tells us, do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Isn't that right? So, understand good news doesn't just mean happy clappy. Woo, we're at hula hoop church with sunglasses on. You know, doing the happy clappy dance all the time. And then somebody come along and say, here's how you live free. Oh, we don't like that because that's, that's talking about bondage. That's captivity. No. It's good. All scripture is profitable. That means it's good. Doesn't that mean it's good? Well, Jesus was anointed to preach the good news. And you know what Jesus told the woman? He said, go and sin no more. That was good news. He said, I don't condemn you. Now go and sin no more. That's good news. He's, in, he's sending her away with a word that will empower her to live free. And she'll follow it. That's good news. Amen. Amen. Not just, I, I, we, we, we are so shallow sometimes in our approach to things. Uh, we just look, we kind of go on the surface of stuff and then run off of that surfacey stuff and come up with stuff that's not biblical. And people just look, well, praise the Lord. Well, I don't have to, I don't have to do anything because Jesus did it all. There will be people in hell who will know that Jesus paid it all. But they didn't accept him. And they didn't act on it. That's, that's not good for them, is it? No. But Jesus said he was anointed, glory to God, hallelujah, to preach the gospel to the poor, spiritually poor, not, not financially poor. Now, good news to the poor man is you can be rich. But he's, he's referring primarily to spiritually poor. The, the, the emphasis here is the good news is to the spiritually poor. Now, don't, don't, don't misunderstand. I believe there's biblical prosperity. 
I believe that we were deemed for the curse of the law. Amen. Christ was the curse. Curse was threefold. Spiritual death, sickness, and poverty. We've been redeemed from it. Hallelujah. Thank God for it. Isn't that right? But when he said, well, I can't, I can't preach the good news to the poor, his main emphasis was the spiritually destitute. There's good news. You don't have to be spiritually destitute anymore. Yeah. Amen. And we know when you come over into the covenant and the revelation of God comes and you walk into the light of the scriptures, praise God, you'll find out that you don't have to be poor and you don't have to be sick and you don't have to be bound. Amen. Somebody say glory. glory. All right. <clears throat> Hallelujah. He said he sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You know, pe people, I'm telling you, there's more people living in bondage to, to the hurts of the past than, than are living in, in the uh, success of the goodness of other things. They're just living uh, always broken hearted. They're always living in captivity. It's time to get, get free from your past. Yeah. Yeah. I said, it's time to be free from your past. Now, this Pentecostal church should say amen, at least loud enough so I can hear it. Amen. Hallelujah. We are not the first church of the frozen chosen. Can you say amen? amen. All right. He sent, so he's, he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal, bind up the broken hearted. You know, people, people get hurt, and they, their emotions get crushed, and their emotions get destroyed. Uh, and, and, and God wants to minister to that. How does he minister to it? The anointing of God will break the bondage those things hold over people's lives. Now, I, I'm, I'm real honest with you. I've seen a lot of people at the church. They'll come in, they'll get saved, they'll get turned on to the Lord, and then somewhere down the line, they'll go be, start rehashing all that old stuff back into their life. Jesus came to set you free from that. Yeah. Amen. Well, you don't know what my mama did to me when I was eight years old. Well, I'll tell you how to get free from it. Forgive them. I said forgive them. But you don't know what they did to me. Forgiveness is not for them. The forgiveness is for you. Root, the root of bitterness doesn't hurt them. It hurts you. Your wanting payback is not going to hurt them. It's going to hurt you. You're wanting to be justified. Well, you may not get justified in this life in the natural. We will all stand before the Lord. Amen. We've got to get over some of these things and let the Lord work in us and work out of us things that are holding us back because that will hold you back. Well, you don't know what so-and-so did to me last week. Well, you have to forgive them. I said, you'll have to forgive them. I'll be honest with you, if the, if the people that, that left our church in the past had forgiven us for whatever it is they dreamed up that we had done, hello, they'd still be here. I'm just telling you the truth. We had one guy one time, somebody in the church was, was at a gas station, and, and this guy was mad at me because I, I just flat out told his, his girlfriend that uh, they needed to stop living together. And if he was going to marry her, he should marry her. Stop, stop leading her on that he was going to marry her and take care of her and, and, then, and not marry her. He, he, was just, he was just enjoying the benefits without the commitment. I said, well, you know, he, you, know you need to tell him, uh, you know, put up or shut up. Either going to marry me or get, we're done. Because you can't live in like this. You're coming to church. You know, you're getting to the presence of the Lord. You feel condemned because you're living in sin. You know you're living in sin. It's holding you back. He keeps promising you the world. And he, he, he saw somebody a few years later. And our church at a gas station. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Ed Taylor, he just started laying, laying, laying in on me. He did the, it's not affecting me. But you know, you know, he's over there mad at me. It's, you know who's hurting? It's hurting him. I said, it's hurting him. Uh, praise the Lord. We need to get over that stuff. And people end up with problems later in life because they, because they didn't walk in love and forgiveness. I've seen, I've seen people. I, I, I know people, family members, didn't walk in love and forgiveness and just, a bitter, just get bitter. Get older, they get more bitter. Jesus came to heal, bind up those things. The anointing of God will rid you of, listen, if you'll let the anointing work in you and you act on the word, let the anointing work in you, it, it'll, it'll rid you of that animosity and anger and hate and, and, and stuff that you have from way back. So when you get born again, you don't get rid of that. You're forgiven for your sin, but you've got to forgive people of their sin. Yeah. Amen. 
Isn't that right? We got to learn. We got to learn to walk in forgiveness toward people who've done us wrong. And you know they've done you wrong. What's that song? Another somebody done somebody wrong song? Who did that song? Was it B.J. Thomas? It's another. It was B.J. Thomas. Okay, another somebody done somebody wrong song. Bill Bill's. He's triple. He's triple working. He's multitasking. He's doing something on the computer. He's trying to talk to customer service. And he's listening to the sermon. That's good, brother. <laughs> we got to stop taking it. We didn't let the anointing work in us. Yeah, but, you know, my, my parents did such and such to me when I was a kid. You know what? You can't go back and relive your childhood and get that taken straight care of. Well, I just want them to admit they're wrong. They may not ever do that. I said, they may not ever do that. God, that, that, that tore our church up a number of years ago. Now, went out and lied on us. No, they just lied. They just lied. Called everybody up and said he was the pastor from Jeremiah sent to restore all the sheep that Pastor Ed had scattered and all kinds of stuff. And the whole time he's getting it on with the, his worship leader, who's somebody else's wife, while his wife's laid upstairs going into diabetic comas. Hello. Just go on and on and on with the story. I can tell you the whole story. I mean, we don't need to go over that whole thing. But you know what? Um, I had to forgive him. And I didn't straighten him. As a matter of fact, he got worse. So my forgiving him didn't fix him. It fixed me. Because he hurt our church bad. Talk about my wife bad. It's amazing how many people want to talk about your family members when they, when they get mad at you. Yep. I remember one of the things that they did. did and the, I'm, just, I'm just trying to show you because we had to get in forgiveness about this. The ladies in the church came to my wife and said, look, we want to help you. We want to help clean the house. You know, they came over and would mop the floors and, and wax the floors and take care, clean the house up with her and the small children. We want to be a blessing to you. And then when they left the church, she sat right there and watched us clean the house. That's a catch-22. How do you win that one? You know, well, if you don't let them, then they get bad at you because you wouldn't let them come in because you, you know, you cut off their chance to be a blessing. If you do, they're going to talk about that you didn't do anything while they were there. Well, you said you wouldn't come do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, so they go after your families and stuff. You got to walk in forgiveness because you can't live in bondage and captivity to those people. But again, forgiveness is on your part. And so Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. And his word to you is, remember this? He said, if you have ought against any. Or if they have ought against you. Honestly, if somebody's got ought against you, you gotta go, go try to get it straight. And if they won't let you straighten it out on their end, that's that's you you can't you can't make that happen. You gotta do your part. And get over it to forgive this and let them go. And just sing ease on down the road. <laughs> I feel like I'm 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 that that transformer, bumblebee. Song for everything. That that's how you communicate. Amen. It says, the heal of the brokenhearted, deliverance to the captives. The anointing of God is manifest to deliver you. And I am telling you that whatever you are bound by, you can be free from. You can be free from the past. You can be free from other people. You can be free from, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the fear of other people. You can be free from what they said about you and done to you. You can be free from all that. God wants you free. Say, God wants me free. And the anointing of, uh, is available to deliver you. Now, you go study, and you'll find, you know, a lot of women, women have been abused, boys have been abused, people have been taken mistreated, and, it, and they let that control the rest of their life. You can be free from that. Amen. I mean, a lot of women come where they hate men because of what some... some evil, demon-driven male did to them. It wasn't men. It was a demon. It was evil in them. It wasn't males. It wasn't the whole male gender that did that to you. It was an evil spirit operating or motivating someone to act and do things that were ungodly. Amen. And if you don't forgive, that, that event will control you till you take your last breath. A lot of boys become homosexuals because they get molested by some, and, I'll tell, and in many, many cases, some male family member that nobody knew about. 
You see, and they go out and they and they and they give into that because they didn't forgive. And that that spirit gets a hold of them and drives them, and drives them into something other than what they're supposed to be. It's demonic. I said it's demonic. And you got to walk in forgiveness, or that event will control you forever. In that, amen. God wants you delivered, and the anointing of God will deliver you. You can be free from the things of the past that control and have tried to set your destiny on a course outside the will of God. God wants you free. Yeah. Amen. He wants to restore your spiritual insight. He's here to recover your sight to the blind. Now, honestly, I believe a lot of these things. Now, don't, don't take me wrong. Don't go, well, Pastor Ed, don't believe in healing. Doesn't believe in, no, I don't believe that he just singled out certain healings. He was, I believe this is spiritual analogies here. Because we know that he covers health and, whole, and holiness and healing to people later on in other places in the Bible. So that's not like we're saying, I'm doing it. But this particular passage is not about, you know, the gospel to the poor. Oh, it's only the, the financially poor. I believe it's spiritually poor. I believe this is what we're, you know, we need to stay within the context of what's going on. Recovery of sight to the blind. I believe God wants us to once again see with clarity into spiritual things. He'll heal, the, he'll heal the natural blind. We know that. It's throughout Scripture. It's throughout the New Testament. It's throughout the ministry of Jesus. Amen? But here, this passage, I believe, if we rightly interpret it, he's talking about a restoration of seeing into spiritual things the way God intended for us to. Because we became spiritually blind. God wants to restore our spiritual insight. Hallelujah. So that we can see with clarity in his word, see with clarity his spirit, see with spiritual clarity the things of God and not misinterpret them. And so he sent the anointing so that we could do that. That's why the spirit of God is called the teacher. You know, the, the Paracletos, one of the definitions for the, 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 the name uh, of the comforter, the King James translated comforter, but one of the definitions of that word Paracletos, which is that, or Paraclete, the Paracletos is that actual form used there, um, means teacher. He's our teacher. He's the holy teacher. He's the one that as we'll lean to him, we'll have clarity and insight into the things of the Spirit, into the Word of God. And He wants us to have that. You don't have to go through life. Too many people say, well, you never know what God's going to do. Well, read the book. <clears throat> Get out your Bible and read it and trust the teacher. What, what did John say? Look over First John chapter 2. Verse 20, but you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Verse 27, but the anointing which you've received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. Don't take that wrong. Do not misinterpret that. That doesn't mean that, you know, when somebody says them teachers of the Bible, you don't need that. You don't need man teaching what man thinks about stuff. We need the anointing. You have an unction from the Holy One, and you don't need any man their philosophies or their ideas, you need, they need to be anointed to teach. If that were the case, he would not have given us teachers in the church. God's not schizophrenic. He didn't give you teachers in one minute to tell you that, you know, they're, they're there to perfect you and then turn around and tell you you don't need them. So it can't mean that. So you go to somebody who, who doesn't read the Bible, right? They'll come along with that. Say, I don't need to go to church because I don't need a teacher. I, I got the unction. Now, that's not what he's saying. The anointing that's in you, hallelujah, you receive him, abides in you. You do not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is true and is not a lie, even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Now, if him you're abiding in, and him gave you teachers in the church, he wants you to listen to what they had to say because they're going to be teaching about the anointing. It's the anointing he's after. You don't need scholars. You know, listen, we don't need people who, who are scholarly, who, who are anti-everything. 
Well, I'll just tell you, that it was no big deal where they crossed the Red Sea. The water was only six inches deep there. You know, and I just I look at that and think, wow, a whole army drowned in six inches of water. That's a bigger miracle. You know, when, when, you, when you're dumb and you try to be cool and dumb, you end up saying stupid stuff. No big deal. They fed the 5,000 with the, with the, with the, the uh, two fish and the five loaves. The loaves of bread were bigger in those days. Now, I don't know about you. I've been, I've been to the grocery store, and you get, what, maybe 20 slices of bread out of a king-sized loaf of some bean. Hello. So you're going to feed 40 people one piece of bread, or 48 people. So maybe 100 people. That's, that's still 4,990 short. Now, I don't know what kind of ovens you're talking about. You'd have to have ovens three city blocks long to cook two, five loaves of bread to feed 5,000 people, besides women and children. Now, it's, that's the kind of thing we don't need to talk. We don't need to be taught traditions of men. Remember, Jesus said you, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, Pharisees, you've made the word of God in none effect through the traditions of men. That's what he's talking about. We're teaching traditions rather than speaking under the anointing. But you have an anointing, you have an unction, you have an anointing abiding within. And see, the anointing has come to, to restore recovery of sight to the blind so we can see once again. I just believe, you know, there's, there are people who just can't see because they're looking with the wrong glasses on, spiritual glasses. They're looking, you know, they're looking for things that they want to hear and want to see, and they can't see with clarity because they're not looking properly. And then you get people who are demonically anointed to teach you the wrong things. People fall for that. I'll be honest with you. I've been around people um, uh, that, well, my son told me, he said, I, I was around somebody one time. He said, what they were saying, you know, the whole time they're talking that they're wrong, but something about it made you want to believe what they were saying. The, way, the, the, the spirit that was on them. And you know they're wrong, but something was on them making you go, well, I want to believe what you're saying because, because this, you know, it's a demonic anointing. Hello? I'm telling you, in this day, in this era, we need eyes that have been recovered and we spiritually see things in the realm of the Holy Ghost so that we can rightly judge and discern things. Amen. You can be ever ready. You can be ever ready to believe the best of every person. The King James says that love believes the best of every person. The Amplified says it really better. And understanding the word-for-word -word translation, sometimes you can't, you don't have the, you're not afforded the opportunity to add another adjective or adverb in there. But the, but the Amplified Bible says love is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Meaning what? You want to. But if some guy's got a gun at your head, get ready to pull the trigger, you can't believe that he, he, want, he doesn't want to do you harm. Amen. Or if they're beating your child with a, with a stick, and, and, and trying to kill them, and you come out there and they're about to kill them, you can't go, oh, I just believe that you really don't want to hurt them. <laughs> now, we may talk later, yeah. but it's going to be later because I'm going to hurt you now. Yeah. Now, I may want to believe the best of every person, but when you see something else going on, you can't be stupid. Amen? So we want, we want to see clear with clarity. Just because somebody walks up behind a podium and they say that they're a Christian minister, Hallelujah. Second Timothy 3, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, trady, traitors, head, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Now let me say, now, 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 having a form of godliness. See, Satan has used and manipulated the church. Love always believes the best of every person, and they say that they're a Christian minister, and, uh, and all they have is a form of godliness. But they deny the power. But if you're not spiritually in tune and don't see with clarity, remember, he's hit to give recovery of sight to the blind. And I believe spiritually blind so that we see with clarity. Amen. 
that when their intents are wrong, oh, you, know, you, can, you can't say, that's regular, you're judging them, you're misjudging them. Well, the Bible says they're going to be here. So that means that I need to make sure that I see with clarity how do you do that. You let the anointing of God work in you through his word, by Jesus, by the Holy Ghost working in our life. He's been sent to cause recovery of sight to the blind so that we can see with clarity so that when those who come in with a form of godliness but deny the power thereof who are all those other things, we know it and we don't give ourselves over to their teaching. Somebody say, hmm. Hello? I get solemn. Because, we, you know, well, I bet. They would never put them on Christian television if they weren't of God. Well, I'm glad y'all figured that out. Lord have mercy. A number of years ago, a place down in Charlotte had some guy on there for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And he got up there because he, he could read, he could tell everything about everybody that came on the show. He pulled them out of the audience and started telling them, well, you live in such and such, and you do this, that, and you do this yesterday, da 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 later, he was a homosexual. He wasn't, operating in, he wasn't operating in the word of knowledge. He was operating in a familiar spirit. He was operating under the power of a demon spirit. And I'm telling you, if the church were, were walking with, with clarity, walking with their eyes recovered from spiritual blindness, they'd have seen it. Why didn't the host see it? Because there were a whole lot of things going on with them. Yeah, that's it, money. You get a crowd, you get money, you get ratings. I went on a program one time, and, and somebody came up and says, now look, you guys, you know, you're, we, we all know you're just window dressing because we're the small churches. You know what they wanted with, from the window dressing? They wanted you all to turn on the telephone and see Pastor Ed standing up there, and you're going, whoo, Pastor Ed's there. Well, we want you to call and contribute $30 a month to our station. Well, Pastor Ed's there. I'm going to do it. That's the last time I went. Well, I'm not window dressing for anybody. God didn't call me to be window dressing. He didn't call me for you to use me to milk money out of the people in my church. That's what it was all about. I, won't, I, I said, that's, that was it for me. I almost walked off the set, but I didn't. I mean, I, 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 I started to just turn around and walk right off. You know, oh, you got the big church, so you can call me window dressing? Yeah. See, we got to be spiritually discerning of things. I have ever turned something on. Now, I've had this happen. I've had this happen so many times. And, and, and honestly, you start looking at yourself. It's, it's, it's good to look at yourself and judge yourself. For if you will judge yourself, you won't be judged. Make sure your attitude, your motives are right. But I'm telling you, people have started coming and, and, and doing ministry. And churches started just going crazy over them and, and all having them. I'm talking names. You would go, you got to be kidding me. The woman with the feathers and the oil and the blood was in some of the biggest churches in America. Charismatic, word of faith, Holy Ghost churches. Because one of the leaders condoned it. I'm not going to call any names. I'm not, this is old, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to use it as an example. Until she was caught, and then when she got caught, they all felt stupid. I mean, how they got, somebody said something's not right about it. Say, what, what was that? They spiritually saw something's not right about this. And they had, they, they, had, they had television equipment in their ministry and snuck it in over at the meeting and used super, uh, super high-speed film, which meant they could slow it way down and keep it sharp, and took it back to their, to their equipment and downloaded it and put it in there and then slowed it way down and found out she was, she was pulling all this stuff out. It was all tricks. And then showed some of the leaders... Of course, then they all had to renounce her. But see, somebody, somebody's going to something. Well, I had those things happen all the time. I'm like, something's not right about that. There was a guy going around the country all about, about 15 years ago, everywhere he was going. I mean, just big offerings, huge. Found out later he was a homosexual. Just, I mean, and, and just something bugged me about him. And I couldn't put, ever, ever had something bug you, you couldn't put your finger on it. Don't override your bug. If something's bugging you and you can't get your finger on it, just, just hang loose. But don't give yourself over fully, you know, just say, now, Lord, am I, am I misjudging here? <clears throat> if you don't get a, a real clear, yes, you are misjudging, you just, just, just back away from it. 
He's protecting you. See, if we had more people who walked in the, where the anointing had caused recovery of sight to the blind to come and spiritual discernment, seeing things clearly in the realm of the spirit, we'd have a lot more people kept out of trouble. Because you'd go, no, something's not right about that. Something not, something's not right about how they teach this. Somebody asked Brother Hagin one time, somebody was teaching prosperity, and he said it was really good. They said, well, do we, should we have it in our churches? He said, nope. I need to do it. And it won't, another year or so later, he, that guy got off. At the time, he was teaching really good, but he got off. Started teaching stuff in, in an excess that wasn't biblical. And see, what was that? That was spiritual insight. No, nope, I need to do it. Didn't have a reason. Yeah. Didn't say, oh, he's off or whatever. Just, to, no, I need to do it. Why? Because if he comes into your church yeah. and teaches while he's on, and he gets off and you bring him back, everybody's going to think it's okay. Well, does the Lord not love them? Yeah, he's trying to talk to them. If they, wouldn't, they probably wouldn't listen. Well, I know they wouldn't because there was a meeting years ago uh, before Dad went home where a lot of guys came in. They didn't listen. And I'm going to tell you, it's messed up things. Things got off. It's hurt the church. I believe we're not where we're supposed to be right now because some of those people didn't listen in that meeting. Rejected the counsel of, of their, their spiritual father. Didn't listen to it, but now we, we're not really where we should be in the body. And so God wants the anointing to work in us and bring us with clarity. Oh, my. Think about what's walking in clarity and see and having recovery of sight and the, the body of Christ. And you walk into a meeting. Oh, we've got a big meeting over here with such and such. So, whoo, praise God. You walk in and something all of a sudden on the inside, as soon as they get it, begin speaking, go up. Uh, that's wrong. And you look at yourself and say, now, now what is it? Why, why, why am I sensing that? And you judge yourself. Say, I've done this numerous times. I've, I've been in churches where people were in the church, and I knew something wasn't right about them. Couldn't put my finger on it. God didn't even tell me exactly what it was. I just knew something wasn't right. And I kept away from them. I didn't let them influence my life. Why? They would have, they would have been destructive. They could have hurt me. You pray for them. You pray for the effects of what they may do to be limited. Hello? Are you here? I know a church where the guy had an assistant pastor on staff, and he'd take people out in, the, out in the foyer during the service, and they'd complain about the pastor. He'd say, well, I know I agree with you too, but I can't do anything about it. He's on staff. He's an assistant. Yeah, I know, but I can't do anything about it. Now, ultimately, he left, and, and, and it, it, I think it was getting to a point that something was going to have to go, and he decided to leave, but God had already started working some things out. Somebody got to praying. Lord, protect the church. Stop that. Don't let this happen. Don't let it destroy the church. And it didn't. The church, church is doing well. But, they, you know, well, see, you'll always find somebody want to hear what you, your gripe. Or they'll pull, they'll pull it out of you. You ever had that happen? You get so bored. I'm talking about being spiritually discerning. If somebody in church comes up to you and starts trying to pull gripes out of you about me, guess what spirit they're operating in? It ain't the Holy Ghost. It's not the Holy Ghost. One of, one of the, here, here's, a, here's a classic statement made not just in our church, in any church anywhere where somebody is, using, is in the wrong spirit and they're, and they're starting to stir trouble up. Well, I love the pastor, but. Oh, I really love the pastor. You know, but I really can't. This is a problem here. <clears throat> I love the pastor. Whenever, and, and even if the but's not said, it's inferred. That's the wrong spirit. I said, that's the wrong spirit. Well, you know, I've been feeling the same thing too. Do you know who sent them? The Holy Ghost didn't send them over to you to get you, to get you together so y'all could talk about it. And, and um, you know, everybody just kind of talk about how they felt the same way too. It just don't work that way. As a matter of fact, we have a biblical example where Miriam and Aaron tried that. Yeah, the Lord talks to us too. Huh. Leprosy. And the Lord comes down. 
it was Moses perfect? <laughs> Far from it. He was a weenie in the natural. He stuttered. He said, well, how am I going to talk to these people? Aaron will talk for you. Had to send Aaron on just to talk for him. Hello. Stuttered. And they finally got fed up with being the second and third uh, uh, rate on the show. They said, well, God speaks to us too. And God says, yeah, I speak to you, but I speak to Moses face to face. Man, I'm telling you. you, you and you get people coming to church going, I love the pastor, but you better watch out with Miriam and Aaron. That's the spirit. That's the spirit's on them. And if you don't watch it, it'll get on you. See, we got to be able to see clearly. Go, oh, that's the wrong spirit operating in them. And be honest with you, tell them so. You know what? You came to me and said, I love the pastor. And when you said, but that's the end of our conversation. Because you got the wrong spirit operating in you. God didn't call perfect people. He called willing vessels. Amen. He didn't call people who, may, who never make a, make a bad decision. Did you know that Paul, with all of his revelation, made a vow and shaved his head? Which is not faith. Remember that? They shorn their heads. That wasn't God. It's not how you do things. And so God said the anointing of God is sent. It's for us to have recovery of sight to the blind. We need to trust God. And I've had, the thing, I've had these things happen so many times over the years of my life. It aggravated. I tell you, it got to the point it aggravated me. I could see it. I knew something wasn't right. Couldn't put my finger on it. And if you, if you tried to deal with it or something or tried to, you know, you, you, you got caught all kinds of names. You are judgmental. You are this, you are that, or whatever. And, and the whole thing was you just knew something wasn't right. All the time, just something wasn't quite right. Just couldn't. Well, you know, you're, you're getting over in the spirit enough to see, to see something. But the way the devil combats that is to tell, have people say you're judgmental. God said, don't judge. Hello. And church down the street's glad for you to come down there and go there. They'll open the doors up. Just come on in. Well, what would have happen if we had it like it used to be? Well, so and so just came from your church. What happened? Well, this is what happened. Well, I'll tell you what, they can't come here until they get it straight. You know what they would do? They'd go somewhere else. In fact, everybody, everybody walked that way. Pastors need to be spiritually discerning too. Because they come in with if they come out of trouble and bring come to your church, they're gonna bring it with them. It'll show up eventually. Why don't they come in with trouble? You understand what I'm saying? There's there's ways people can leave churches that's right. Marry somebody, go where they went, where, where their, their spouse was going before you got married. That's that's okay. Those happen. It goes both ways. Sometimes I go there to meet with a spouse. We had that, we had, had that happen. Sometimes they come here with us. Well, that's all right. Leaving in trouble. They come in your church, they leave them in trouble, they'll bring it into your church. We got to be spiritual. And I tell you, I'll tell you. <clears throat> sometimes you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see spiritually. We had, a number of years ago, we were, we were, we were here and came in church one Sunday morning. We had 30 extra people. Like, what? Church of the week worked. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. I've had, listen, I've had some stories. We, we don't do church of the week anymore. I don't know if they still do that thing or not. But uh, somebody come in and say, oh, I was just walking down the interstate, you know, traveling to Alabama, and this thing blew up, and I picked it up. Then they let the cat out of the bag. They needed bus fare to Alabama. Yeah, right. Yeah, you just, just blew up there, this church of the week, and you came to check us out. You came to see if you could get some money. Amen? Then they tell us, well, I'm leaving for Alabama in the morning. Th three weeks later, you see them at the other bridge on the other side of town. We'll work for food. Don't, not, we'll work for a ticket. You know, they just, they just go to the churches and use that thing. This week, that, that Sunday morning, we came in 30 extra people. 
then they start going out the door. Well, hey, good, glad to have you. Where'd you come from? Well, we, we go over. We used to go over to the such and such. Okay, and all of them came out of the same church. Now I didn't have to be real spiritually discerning, which do something wasn't right. So, a couple services of that, I I, I, found, I figured out who the ring leader was, and so I, and I called the pastor where they came from the church. I said, "Hey, brother, I got a bunch of people over here that came coming out of your church." He said, yeah. He said, such and such is, is, is stirring up a lot. I said, yeah, I know who she is. I know which one it is. He said, I, you can't say this. He can't be honest with you. I really don't want her back. She caused so much trouble. Tore his church up. I said, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to them, and I'm going to tell them they better not invite another person from your church to come over here. He said, because we're not here to hurt you. We're here to help you. We want to be a blessing. We're working for the same Jesus. So she came to church the next time. I said, I need to talk to you. Don't you invite another person from that church over here. Don't you tell anybody else where you're going to church. If they call you, you tell them. And I said, as a matter of fact, before you can come back to church again, you're going to go to that pastor and you're going to get this straight. Why? <clears throat> because you can't let them come in with that spirit on them. It'll mess your church up. Now, about two years later, came in one Sunday morning and the whole bunch was gone again. The whole bunch, she went, she didn't, I had started teaching instead of preaching all the time. They liked preaching, so they all left. Like a, like a bee, like a bumblebee ball, like little soccer kids all following the ball around. Guess who the ringleader was? Same person. Now, what happened? Never could trust them. Never could put confidence in anything with her. Why? Because, because we knew what, we knew where she was coming from. And just something went right. She wasn't settled down. She, you, just, you, just, you discern that. You watch that. You cover that. And you'll get people coming to your life. There might be people in church. And you walk in love with them, but you can't fully trust them. You can't let your guard down. Because the minute you do, they'll, 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 they'll mess you up. I've seen it happen too many times. Well, a few years ago, we had some guy come in and going to record our services for us. Going to do it for free because the Lord told him. Going, he's going to start a church and name it Faith and Victory Church of Charlotte or whatever. I, I forgot. Well, it's going to be some other church. Before that, that it's going to be Faith and Victory Church. Started recording. Came in. If y'all remember somebody, went out in the foyer and recorded all these testimonies. Going to put us a video together. I still ain't got the tape. But I just couldn't, I couldn't fully trust him. I just, something was just won't, right. He got mad about something I said. Took his camera and the film and ran home. Finally, he was telling people in the church he went to, Ed Taylor, I'll tell you one thing. You're trying, you're trying to give him some leeway, but you go, something ain't right. Well, I'm going to tell you, in your, in your personal relationships in the kingdom of God, Follow that. When, you have, when your, your spiritual eyes are going, I have no reason to feel this way. They've done nothing to make me feel this way. That's, that's seeing in spiritual eyes. If you've judged yourself. Yes. Amen. I can't put my finger on it. Your spouse may go, why do you feel that way about that? I don't know. You don't override that. You pray about it. You ask the Lord to help you. Make sure that it's not just some, you know, something in you that you, you dislike about them as a, just in the natural. You know, they rub your fur the wrong way or whatever. But don't override it. Because really what that is, that is seeing the, 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 the you know, recovery of sight to the blind. You're seeing spiritual things and picking up on it and you're, um, and the natural man wants to override it. Sometimes because of, of erroneous teaching in the church about the love walk. You can teach a running stone on the love walk? Oh, yeah. You can put people in the captivity and bondage by bad teaching on the love walk if it's not taught properly. Like I said, it's ever ready to believe the best of every person. Okay? Doesn't mean that you, you, you can't. Jesus didn't tell the woman that was caught in adultery the very act, I believe that you didn't want to be there. He said, where are your accusers? I don't condemn you. Go your way and sin no more. 
Amen? And so when it comes to ministries, when it comes to relationships, you're getting a check. Don't override the check. That is the anointing of God that's bringing recovery of sight to the blind in many, many, many cases. Where you're able to go, that's just not quite right. And you're going to walk away from it. Or you're going to put a guard up. I've withdrawn myself um, from people over time because something didn't seem right. I couldn't put my finger on it. Later on, I found out. Something showed up later. Well, I remember, <laughs> why do I keep telling these stories? What time is it? Last story. Um, it is. It's my last story for the night. You know, Dad Hagee used to tell stories to help, help bring a point home. See, and, and there's a lot of times we can, we can learn from stuff. When we first came to Greensboro, um, remember the guy we talked about that, that ended up kind of splitting our church all up and all that kind of stuff? He called me up one day. He, you know, he, wanted, to, he wanted to come over and take me out to lunch. Well, he's a traveling minister. Okay. You know, and they, and they attend the church sometime when they were in town. All right. So we went out to lunch. Now, he talked like Brother Hagen and played the trip, trumpet like Phil Driscoll is what he told me. That's a bell and the whistle right there. If you're that good, why are you just doing this? I'll be honest. If, you're, if you can play like Phil Driscoll and teach like Dad Hagen and nobody's ever heard of you, something's wrong. And uh, he, wanted to come, he wanted to preach at the church. I said, well, I, you know what? And even then, in my youth, I said, well, we'll consider it. He never did. Why? Well, in the beginning, I had no reason to say no, but just something on the inside, just, just something down in here. Brother Hagin said, something down on the inside was a scratch of me. Had a, had a spiritual itch. That's, what's that? You've had recovery of sight. You're discerning things spiritually. You're seeing into spiritual things. He wanted to preach in our church so bad. Kept calling us that way. You know, brother, I just, I don't have the freedom to do that right now. I don't have a release. Yeah, but I teach like Kenneth Hagin and play the trumpet like Phil Drisco. Oh, man, you're awesome. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, just a natural, that just sounds like, sound like, sound like a one, two punch to me. That's a winner. Because I love, see, I like Phil Drisco. I still like Phil Driscoll. Man, play a horn the way you just, you know, just, they asked Doc Severson one time, he said, how does it feel to be the best trumpet player in the world? He said, I don't know, you'll have to ask Phil Driscoll. <coughs> Amen. Some of y'all remember the group, um, uh, Mad Dogs and Englishmen, Joe Cocker, that was Joe Cocker's group. Driscoll played with them. That's why he sings and acts like Joe Cocker. <laughs> you ever seen Joe Cocker? Did you feel Driscoll do the same thing? <laughs> Hallelujah. But he just he kept trying to bug me. I just found something, brother, I, I don't have a release. I don't have a release. Then all of a sudden he starts telling me what I'm doing wrong in the ministry, and he's the one that started getting all the people against me and started, it ended up tearing the church up. Now, what would have happened if I had given, given him the pulpit? And then he did that. But I had to obey the itch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Somebody say, yeah. And one, one time, one time. Another story. I did say it was my last one, didn't I? I didn't lie, but the Lord changed me. He said, I got to change it. A number of years ago, we had a well-done guy. And listen, I don't want to call his name because, you know, um, we loved him. He's gone on to be with the Lord by now. But um, he said, you ought to have so-and-so come into your church. Okay, praise the Lord. Well, I was, you know, and, and, and I let my guard down because I trusted him. Guy came in, supposed to be like you know, a prophet or whatever. He set something off in the church. And, and, I, and, and then my friend, you know, remember Joe Morris? Hey, Joe. <laughs> Joe's a buddy. He said, he said, anywhere he goes, he tells, he said, I've been trying to tell him he's off because he worked for the guy, not the guy that came, the other guy, the one that told me I should have him. He had come. He said, after telling him he's off, but he wouldn't listen to him. You know, sometimes you don't listen to younger people because you think 
They don't, they, they're not as whatever as you are. They're not as in tune as you are. And all of a sudden, things started happening, and, and problems started arising uh, around this guy's ministry. But see, he was getting in churches all over the place because somebody was recommending him. And, and I'll tell you, you just can't do that. You've got to have spiritual discernment. And, and uh, even if someone you know recommends him and someone you trust recommends him, if something on the inside don't bear witness that, you just can't do it. It doesn't mean you disrespect the person recommending it, but you've got to obey the Holy Ghost. We're answers to the Holy Ghost. Amen. I said amen. I mean, well, even a, a, a number of years ago, down in Ashboro, we had a church down We had a, one of our, our ministers down there. Uh, this guy came in, started saying he was an apostle. And everywhere he went, he, he got this teaching on the apostle where, where he, because he was an apostle, he, just, he was the higher gift in the church. And wherever he went, he took over. You come into covenant with me because I'm an apostle. And they had a letter from, from Brother Hagen recommending his ministry. They finally had to get up publicly and say, have you looked at the date on the letter? It's five years old. We no longer recommend them. You should have at least called the minister because the churches started getting torn up. That church, got, that church got blown out of the water. It shut down. They tried to restart it, turned over somebody else. It's, it just never really made it like, it like it was doing at one time. Tore it all to pieces. This guy, he went to see Brother Hagin to rebuke him. And this pastor that was down there at the time was, went with him because he was all for this guy. He said he's sitting in the meeting, and this guy's rebuking Brother Hagin, and Brother Hagin starts quoting Scripture one after the other every time he says something. And he starts saying, well, the Bible says this, this, because he's trying to prove his teaching about the apostleship. And Dad Hagin was just cooking him. Flayed one side, turned him over and cooked the other side. And this pastor said, he, he told us, he said, I'm sitting there, and I finally went, what in the world am I doing in here? He came to himself in the middle of all that because he was like, this guy had him under, under a spell almost. That's why we need to trust the anointing has given us recovery of sight to the blind so that when perilous times have come and men should be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, heady, traitors, high-minded, you know, so forth and so on, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, we can see through it. And we don't have to go out and announce it. You don't have to publish in a magazine that so-and-so is not, not of God. Okay? That's not your job. It's God's job to bring them down if they need to be brought down. But you need to listen to them so you're protected. And don't fall into a trap. Amen. I said amen. Can I get amen from Brother Bill? Amen. Yeah. <coughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> yep. Now, the guy that was doing our camera had come into his church with Brother Bill Pastor and messed his church up some, and he came here to get, get things straight and do something because he was trying to work out, I guess, work out some kind of penance. That was his hook to get him in. He didn't work out no penance. He's trying, he trying to manipulate for a position. People are trying to get in your life that don't need to be in your life. Well, do I just act like I don't know him? No, 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 no. We walk in love. But love does not mean that you open up and let people into your life where they're going to cause damage. That's not love. Especially with something on the inside saying there's something not right there. Now that's ministers with bringing in guest speakers. That's pastors, you know, with the flock. That's people in the church with people in the church, people in the church with people outside of our church. You've got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Yeah, the Kenny Rogers are doing it. All right. Amen? Amen. And it's, it's just, it's, it's good to trust the anointing. Now, let me say this. Everything that Jesus does for us is for our good. So if you're warned, it's for your good. And that's, an, and listen, I'm not just talking about I don't, I'm not talking about anything that's going on right now. I'm just talking about, that's, where we, that's a scripture we're covering. I'm just talking about this. I shared all these experiences. We can share it. And listen, give me another few years. We can share some more. Well, there'll be more. Hello. I've seen people do it. You know, um, people wanted to get around our kids because they thought I was some big shot at Rama because I'm a district director. They were, looking to, they were looking to use that relationship to get ahead. Thought I was going to get him ahead of the ministry. 
No. The fact that you, if you marry my daughter and I, I'm a district director, that $4.50 will get you a vente at, at Starbucks. It's not going to get you ahead in life. Why? Because I believe the Hagans have, have the spiritual discernment. I believe that Doug Jones has discernment. I believe that Tad Gekrich has discernment. They see by the Holy Ghost. They know what's going on. They know when the, they know things. They're not going to do something just because you got some kind of connection to me. Some people start looking. They st and they try to come into their life for that. Just looking for that advantage. Amen. And they, they pick up on it. And send them on down the road. Amen. Katie, shut the barn door, ship your saddle home. It's over. All right. Last thing. Now, I remember back in the... Let's receive the offering. We're going to go home. Next Sunday night is uh, communion and healing rally. Go find, some, go find some sick folk. Like I said, be praying for us for the favor with the business park owner tomorrow. Or th Tuesday. We're not sure which day. Um, he's wanting to go through the park and meet with everybody. We've got some offers on the table with him about some things. They're, they're uh, radical. But that's all right. He, he, I mean, he's, he's got 17 hip units out here right now of these type of buildings. There's 25,000 square feet back in Building 8. Remember that Building 8? We know these guys who moved up here? They were over there in a 25,000 square foot unit. They moved over here to a 12,000. They just half, they went half. So, you know, they, there's, there's 13 extra square thousand square feet unused that they did have. So that's like 13,000 is like, uh, well, we have 552. So that's two of our whole church and another unit. So that's six, that's seven units. Really. That's empty. They, 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 so, so and then the other 13, 17, that's about 24. And if, and if we don't stay in this business, it's probably be 27. So we're just believing that, you know, God gives us favor and direction of wisdom. And we know the voice of the Spirit. Can you say amen? All right, oh, receive an offering? If you give it a credit card, debit card, cap will be out there in the foyer. Go ahead, Father. We bless the people in Jesus' name. Call the, the, the finances blessed. Go ahead and receive it. Listen, now, parents of youth, bring your kids. I'm telling you, they're, they're doing some cool stuff over there. And, uh, and I can promise you this. Our youth pastors won't leave these. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, PO Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.